Kata, 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 kata. Hey guys, welcome to the fifth and the final installment of the five ingredient recipes on this channel. Oh my god, it has been a ride, hasn't it? I've done smoky patty jollof rice, I've done abacha, I've done moi moi, I've done fried rice, all prepared with five ingredients. Yes, these are all recipes we normally use a lot of ingredients to prepare. But I decided to take on the challenge to prepare these recipes with less ingredients to see how they will taste, to see if some of the ingredients are redundant, if they are doing any work in the recipe. With delicious results, as you have seen. Have you tried any of them? Have you? Have you? What are you waiting for? <laughs> Today, we are going to prepare a goosey soup, the most loved Nigerian soup with only five ingredients. A five ingredient recipe series that does not contain at least one Nigerian soup. Is that one a five ingredient recipe series? Mba no, we need to include at least one Nigerian soup. Nigerian soups are notorious for requiring a lot of ingredients. By the time you finish counting the fish and the meat, dry fish, stock fish, uh, uh, off house, beef, this and that, you're already at number five, not to talk of the other ingredients. So today, I'm going to try to prepare Nigerian Igusi soup with only five ingredients. Let's go. These are the chosen ones. One is over there. Here I have peppers. This is one ingredient. We don't eat a lot of pepper in this house, as some of you already know. So I'm going to use sweet pepper, which is not spicy at all, to make up for the color. You see how that adds a nice color to this egusi soup. If you eat a lot of hot and spicy pepper in your home, you can actually use enough to give you the color that I'm aiming for. We have crayfish to season it. You have bitter leaves. These are freshly washed bitter leaves. If you followed my Nigerian vlogs, you would see me collecting this bitter leaf from the woman that wo normally washes bitter leaves for me in Nigeria. I put it in my freezer and whenever I need it, I bring it out to defrost. I am using bitter leaf because bitter leaf is my favorite vegetable for cooking egusi soup. If you know me, I don't like egusi soup because it's too sweet for me. I use bitter leaves to tone it down. Then you have palm oil. Palm oil gives egusi soup the classic color and it adds a little bit of taste as well. And over here, I have stock fish. This is the original cord. The hard cod with the strongest stock fish smell and flavor. Mmm, your neighbors will hear me when you're cooking this stock fish in your home. The strong flavor of this original cod is enough to season your egusi soup. No need for seasoning cubes. This is what it looks like before cooking it. This one has been cut. You usually cut it in the market because it's very strong. Where can you buy it from? Download SendWave and use it to send money to your people in Nigeria so that they can buy this code, cut it for you and send. Use promo code FLOW for your very first transfer so that SendWave can add $5 or £5 to the money you are transferring. That's enough money to buy you a small stockfish, in it? This stockfish is so strong. You don't even know how strong. <laughs> I started cooking it yesterday. I washed it thoroughly. Then cooked it in my pressure pot for about 15 minutes. I started counting from when it pressurized. After that, I left it in this pot, in the hot water, till this morning. This is how I cook this original cord. Let me check how far to see if I need to cook it more because this thing, eh? It is as hard as stone, eh? Mm. I'll add it earlier when cooking the egusi. I don't need to cook it more, but this thing is so strong. Eh? That's why I don't like using this hard cord, but the flavor is top notch. 
and as always i have the main ingredient over here this is the egusi it's already been ground if you watched my vlog about bringing nigerian food ingredients from nigeria you would have seen where i ground this egusi in nigeria and wrapped it up brought it over here it's been sitting in my freezer since then that's what i'm going to use today i have four cups of ground egusi and then i have salt i normally don't count the main ingredients salt and water let's start cooking i'll boil the stockfish because i just want this water to be hot again while i'm waiting for that to boil i'll chop this bitter leaf this bitter leaf is washed Igbo style <laughs> it's long long yeah you know when preparing bitter leaf soup we spread it out in the sun to dry a bit uh, so that when you're washing it, it will be long. It will not break into pieces. That is perfect for bitter leaf soup. But when you are cooking a goosey soup, if you want to use bitter leaves to cook a goosey soup, you need to chop it. You don't want this long, long one inside a goosey soup, no. So I'm going to pick out the, the stock, you know, the very big ones, and then chop the other one. Oh, I don't want it long, long. Doesn't look good in a goosey soup when it's long, long. A bit of leaf soup, yeah. So that's what I'm going to do. I, I, will, I will not use up all these bitter leaf. I'm pretty sure I will not use all of them, but I don't know the quantity I will need. I go by look. So when I want to add the bitter leaf, I add a bit, stir it. If I like the distribution of bitter leaf in the regusi, I'll stop adding. But if I don't, if I feel like it needs more, I'll add a bit more. This is how I do. I don't, I don't measure these ingredients. I, I don't like to tie myself to exact quantities of ingredients. No, it will make you when you want to. I mean, you can have a general idea of the quantity you need, but you can buy a little bit more if you're buying in the market. If you don't use up all of that, you put it in the freezer, it stores well in the freezer. If you don't have a freezer, you can, or oh, there's no light, I mean, I know about the power cuts in Nigeria. You can just wash it very well, soak it in water, keep it on your kitchen counter. The next day, you can change your menu so that the next day you can use that bitter leaf to prepare yam porridge. You can prepare yam porridge with bitter leaf. I have the recipe on my channel. so. Uh, I don't like the stress of time myself to exact quantities of ingredients, yeah? Not too tiny, eh? <laughs> you don't want it to look like it's chewed on before adding to the soup, but you know. This one is enough, you can take it like this. in small pieces no longer long long <laughs> fold again take it out from the pot Are you seeing it? Are you? Can you see it? Can you? Can you? Okay. Then I slowly decant the water in case there are any unwanted elements at the bottom. The way I cook a goosey soup using the caking method, I like to add water bit by bit. You'll see that. So I want to pour some water over here, some of the stockfish stock. 
over here to make sure I don't have too much water to start with. Then I'll add as needed. So I add the egusi. This is the cooking method of cooking egusi soup. You have another method, the frying method. I prefer this cooking method because Make the egusi cake. Reduce the heat to low. The heating capacity of my cooker is from one to six. So I put it on three now because this thing burns like no man's business. Cover that to cake. Keep an eye on it, don't do any other thing. <laughs> See the bubbles? Sign that it is caking. See the caking. You see why I call it caking? It's caking. This is what will form the lumps. But as you can see, it's already burning, even though the heat is on low. <laughs> or can we say medium? already burning so you need to keep an eye on it food dance while we wait <laughs> do not be tempted to do another thing because this thing burns like eh? madre mia Add a little bit more water. Cover again and leave it to cake. You see how cake it is? This is how to prepare lumpy egusi soup. No need to mold it unless you want really, you know, visible lumps like aborapu egusi. That one is a totally different recipe. But if you want all these kinds of lumps, uh, rough texture, this is how to do it. No need for eggs. <laughs> Some people add egg to get it to lump up. You don't need to add. Uh, what is the name of that thing? Also, don't need to add that for your greasy to cake. The caking is as a result of the egusi rising because it contains carbs. When it rises, it cakes up. But you need to add water bit by bit so that it will take the water slowly if i had added all this water at the same time the egusi will just be swimming inside the water it will not cake yeah it's still rising <laughs> This time you will begin to smell the egusi. The egusi has its own smell when cooked. But it has not been cooked enough for ha ha ha. Egusi needs to be cooked. I personally cook egusi for at least 20 minutes total. That's when the perfect aroma starts coming out. It's looking like this stock is too much. So what I'll do now is I'll begin to, I'm saying this out of experience because I can see that it's no longer caking as quickly as before so it's no longer rising and probably if I add all this water to the soup it's going to be watery. So what I'll do is over here this cooker I'll start boiling it down because I don't want to save it. Remember what we said about saving stock. <laughs> I'm not saving it. 
so while it's boiling down over there this one will be cooking over here it's still kicking off oh my lord still kicking look at that but it's burning can you see it can you see it <laughs> Yeah. Can you see the egusi oil at the top? I don't know. Let me zoom in. There's something here. Off white color. Ah. You can't see it well, eh? Yeah, egusi contains a lot of oil, so you can actually cook egusi soup without palm oil. But I need to add palm oil for the taste. Palm oil adds a unique taste to egusi soup. I think this is fine now. Let me add this one. Perfect water. Add crayfish. Oh, 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 let me zoom out again. Add crayfish. Bitter leaves. This Igbo style washed bitter leaves is quite hard. <laughs> so, because it's dried a bit in the sun before washing. So you need to add it early when cooking. But if you're using a soft vegetable like ogu or spinach, then you need to add that later when the soup is done so that the vegetable will not be overcooked. But this one, there's no overcooking this one. <laughs> it's already dark. <laughs> so nothing to overcook there. What do you think about the distribution of the vegetables? I think I like it. This is enough. I add palm oil. I add enough palm oil to give me the color I want. So I add, stir. I don't like too much palm oil in my egusi soup. I don't like when the egusi is done, oil will be floating at the surface. I don't like that. So this is, mm, this is okay for me. Actually, it looks okay here, but it doesn't look okay on the screen. Let me add a little bit more. If you want to add palm oil, you add all the palm oil you need at this time. <laughs> Don't add now and later add another one. No, it will be tasting raw palm oil, raw palm oil. And just know that this palm oil will be absorbed by the egusi. So even though it looks like it's floating on the surface now, you need to cook this for at least seven minutes. Yeah, that's the amount of time on medium heat. That's the amount of time I've come to realize from experience that it takes for palm oil to be completely absorbed into the meal, to completely integrate into the meal. I'm happy with this color. I don't like, I don't like oil floating in my egusi. I don't like it. It puts me off. Like when I see a, an image of a egusi soup that has, uh, that is so bright, I don't like it. So, and we start cooking for seven minutes, but I need to be checking it from time to time to make sure it's not burning. While that is cooking over there, I'll break the stock fish into pieces and debone it. The bone is soft but you can remove it if you want. If you chew it, even kids can chew it, no problems. It's not like uh, normal fish bones. That is, you can see, I can even crush it with my fingers. Can you see? It's so soft like foam. Then break it into the size you want. If you want to leave it like this for the ogre of the house, <laughs> you know some people like seeing 
big lumps of fish or meat in their soup. So you can leave it like this, but I like to break it into pieces so that I can also debone. Mm. Let me taste it actually. Yeah. It's soft but chewy. Yeah, that's a, a characteristic of this original cod. It's chewy but it's soft. Yeah. Mm. This one will go well with abacha. Hey! And I don't think I told you the real, real reason why I chose stockfish out of all the obstacles. <laughs> Out of all the possible obstacles you can add to a goosey soup, it's because for me, oh, stockfish and a goosey soup, that's a match made in heaven as far as I'm concerned. I don't know, stockfish tastes good in bitter leaf soup, other soups, but I feel like out of all the meat and fish you can add to a goosey soup, if you tell me to choose one, I will go with stockfish. Yeah. And I had to go with this original cod because of its strong flavor. Because I knew that the seasoning cubes are not in the least, so I needed something strong for it. And none other than stockfish original cod. Don't forget to download Send Wave and use it to send money to Nigeria, eh? I'm telling you now, a lot of people are already enjoying the benefits of having SendWave on their phone, sending money to Nigeria, no uh, transfer fees, competitive exchange rates. Yeah, better than you know who. <laughs> better than all the rest, yeah. The money gets to the person's account or your own account, if you've been following my investment series, to your own account in minutes. For now, UK, USA and Canada but they're expanding to other countries especially european countries and when they set up shop in those places i will announce it here yeah that's it it's ready okay i can smell something bonny you know look at that hey Look at that, madre mia. Oh, no, so what? Cotta, 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 cotta. Oh, no, so what? Cotta, 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 cotta. Have I cooked it for seven minutes? I'm not even checking time. I just go by look, but yeah. I go by look. You will know when it has fully absorbed, when you don't see a lot of redness. You see more of yellow color. If it's red, it means that you added too much palm oil. Like after cooking it for long enough, if it's still red, it means you added too much palm oil. It should be yellow, not red. Eh? Now we're in rushing mode. <laughs> While that is still cooking, let me quickly chop the peppers. I prefer to chop the peppers. You can blend it, you can pound it in a mortar. I prefer to chop the peppers so that they will be alive in the soup. <laughs> so you can actually see it, but if you blend it, it will just mix up with the rest of it with the soup it just makes it look nicer the soup overall aesthetic of the soup especially if you're sharing it on social media it looks nicer that's all okay. you can pound it if you wish you can use dry pepper as well if you wish when it comes to hot and spicy pepper add to your taste so let nobody dictate to you the quantity of pepper you should add Nigerian food, except our pepper soups, should not be uncomfortable to the person eating it, no. Recently, I, I uploaded a, a Vitaly soup video on Facebook and somebody actually said, why did you add only one pepper? Like, she was saying it in a rude way. I'm like, what the hell? Is quantity of pepper now an issue? <laughs> Hey, some people were even saying, we don't use fresh pepper to cook bitter leaf soup. Who says who? <laughs> says who? Says who? Hey, what kind of cooking methods people hold on to it? Eh? It shocks me, like, I pity them. It's okay. I pity them. I can't imagine how these people will be suffering in their, in their homes because you're cooking. Oh, if you have only fresh pepper at home 
You will not cook. <laughs> Bitter leaf soup. What is wrong? Pepe is pepe. So long as it bites when you eat it, that's what matters. Actually, fresh pepper tastes better. In fact, the best pepper for bitter leaf soup is Osa and Soka. Yellow pepper, yellow habanero pepper. Because it has this special flavor. And that pepper is fresh. So, I don't understand why somebody was like, and she used fresh pepper. Rubbish, you're cooking rubbish. Okay, I cooked rubbish because I use fresh pepper. Yeah. You know, people are, I don't know, I don't know. The kind of things they say. Because somebody used fresh pepper to cook, you use dry pepper to cook. Therefore, that person cooked rubbish. <laughs> I just, these people are so entertaining. Hey! Entertaining and at the same time, after they've entertained me, I just pity them. Like, what, who are these people? <laughs> who are these people? Madre mia. The kind of beliefs they hold on to. Anyway, I'm just chopping, 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 chopping. That should be fine. Final stirring, I promise. <laughs> Nigerian soup comes with a lot of stirring. Add this stir, add that stir. <laughs> stir, stir, stir. It's yellow, more than red. You see how thick it is? And this time you can add more water if you wish. It's better to make it thick and add more water if you wish than for it to be watery. No. Watery. No. You see how the pepper is peeking out? Yeah. Makes it look better. But if you pound it, it will integrate with any, any every other thing. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but like I said, <laughs> you know, with social media and with photography, <laughs> if you do that, especially a goosey soup, I, I find a goosey soup the hardest soup to, or the hardest meal to photograph. It will look so good live here, but through the lens, it doesn't look as good. For instance, now, this soup, on the camera doesn't look as good as it looks here but you know yeah so that's to make it a little bit pleasing to the eye but apart from that what matters is this taste of your meal eh? that's what matters because you're not cooking it for social media people you're cooking it for yourself if you don't like seeing pepper like this in your meal for instance my daughter if she sees these things now she'll be like Oh, this is going to be a very hot soup, like hot and spicy, I mean. But uh, yeah, if you don't like it or if your kids don't like it, pound it or grind it so that it will disappear in the meal. That's when I'm tasting for salt because crayfish tastes salty. Stockfish has a salty taste. So after all these things have gone into the pot, then you can add salt if necessary. If necessary. So now I'm adding salt because I, I see that it needs salt. And believe you me, this thing needs salt because I didn't add seasoning to it. Normally for a goosey soup, we don't eat a lot of salt in this house. Normally for a goosey soup, if I add seasoning cubes, I don't really need to add salt. Salt is not compulsory in meals. You know that there are some people that their doctors ask not to eat salt. Because they want to reduce the, the sodium in their meals, in their diet. Salt is not compulsory in your meals. Sydney cubes is not compulsory. Pepper is not compulsory. These things are to your taste. And if someone doesn't like pepper at all, that's fine. That's fine. It's not compulsory. For you, no. But for that person, they, they don't like pepper at all in their meals. So they can totally enjoy these meals without pepper in them. For them, of course. So I cover it and leave it to simmer. It has boiled well. Perfecto. Next, 
Let me make some more that I used to enjoy it. I finished semo that is made with one cup of water. So, just one cup of water. Remember our rule, I transfer it to another container immediately. This time, so that the pepper will not continue cooking because the bitter leaf is soft. But if you use a soft vegetable, you should transfer it really quickly another container I'll leave the one I'll eat with in the pot do you know how to make semo do you do you I made a live video on that turn down the heat and start pouring Bit by bit, as you stir. And once you can't stir anymore, stop adding. This will make it easier for you to crush the lungs, the lungs. And use a pot that fix the quantity of semo you're making use a good spatula Very stretchy. Oh no, no one, no. Oh no, no one, no. Oh. Then you add water. A little bit of water. Depending on the quantity and how soft you like your simo. Then allow it to boil to cook well. See the egusi in the bowl. So it's conch egusi soup. You can add water if you wish, so that you get soup water. <laughs> I like soup water. Even the one I'm going to use to eat, I'm going to add a little bit of water to it now. But this one, I'll, I like freezing it conch. When I warm it up for, you know, when we want to eat and I warm it up, I can add a little bit of water. Yeah. Yeah. See, only with stockfish, no need for all that bobo tibo fish and meat. My semo pot boil it over. Like my semo soft. It's more difficult when it's a small quantity. If it's a larger quantity, like two cups now, at least it will fill the pot a bit, making it easier to mix it. Like pounded yam. Look at it. Look at it. Oh, lo, lo, lo. Five ingredient a goosey soup. Magwa chakwa ned. A goosey soup. Five ingredient a goosey soup. Popping. Let's taste it. I'm supposed to sit down and enjoy this delicious meal. You know, when you're eating swallow, you need to relax, settle down, wash your hands and even sit on the floor. But uh, if you see how 
busy that part of my kitchen is right now because of this video I'm making eh? <laughs> you come and help me clean up <laughs> look mira mira que bueno so you wash your hand get it like that arrange it <laughs> Make a small lump, the, the size that will pass your truth. You can, some people can swallow this one at once. <laughs> yeah? And then, get enough soup. And put it in your mouth. And swallow. No chewing. No chewing. <laughs> Nothing is missing in this soup, I'm telling you. Nada! Madre. So I've done my part in this five ingredient recipe. I told you I have five videos. And this is the last one. I've done my part. Have you done your part? Have you liked this video yet? <laughs> Have you? <laughs> Click the box here to watch the other five ingredient recipes. Make sure you don't miss those recipes. There's a lot of science of cooking going on there. Hmm? You will learn a lot. Bang, bang. See?